Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. This is my client Casey. I've been cutting his hair for a long time, but as you can see the last couple years, the haircuts have been quite infrequent. What we're gonna do for him today is a haircut that's loosely based on Leonardo DiCaprio. Now he showed me a handful of pictures of Leo, some longer, some shorter, and we kind of picked apart the pieces from each different cut that he liked. One of the things he was he really wanted was for every hair in the front on the sides of his head to be long enough to tuck behind the ear but he didn't like some of the heavier backs on some of the longer styles. So we're kind of doing a longer front, shorter back thing. And as you can see here in the front, he's got these short hairs that are kind of remnants of, we, we did these kind of like pseudo broken bangs on one of his previous haircuts. And because he already has those short hairs, I'm actually gonna use those as a guide to begin building my length here. So I'm actually using the cheekbone as a guide as well. And it just so happens that that front hair is exactly long enough to fit. So once I cut that first shape following the shape of the cheekbone with the hair pulled straight down, I'm going to start taking subsequent sections up the side of the head here, pulling the new sections down 45 degrees to meet the previous section, not the first section, the previous section, the last one that I cut. And as I do this, I'm going to build up a weight line here that uh, build up some graduation here that echoes the shape of the cheekbones. And I'm going to do this just throughout the entire top of the head here. And as you can see, that short piece in the front just happens to be the perfect length to kind of match up with this. So on the opposite side of the head, as you would imagine, I'm going to do the exact same thing. However, after I cut this first piece, I do want to stop and check the left and the right side to make sure that they are the same length before I move on and, you know, accidentally end up going too long or too short on this side. And as you can see, we were able to leave everything just long enough to kind of tuck behind the ear as per his request. So now in the back, I'm gonna comb everything diagonally back and I'm gonna start taking sections that follow this direction using the, the hair you can see at the tip of my fingers there as a guide to know pretty much how long to cut these hairs. Now my finger angle, my cutting angle is just basically the same as the shape of the head. I'm not going any longer or shorter near the end of this section. I'm just keeping the same length all the way through. And then after I get that first um, piece cut in there, I'm gonna do the same thing in the back that I did on the sides there to where I'm taking each new section, bringing it down 45 degrees to the previous section and using the previous section as a guide. And doing this is going to naturally build up a good strong weight line around the widest part of the head and just emphasize the uh, bone structure that's already there. It's important as I do this, because his hair is somewhat wavy, but not super wavy, uh, or even, no matter what the texture is, it's important that you're doing this with a lot of tension. Like you want even tension on every hair that you're cutting. And so I would say like the tension is more important even than getting a perfectly neat, clean section. As long as you have that good, even tension, your sections can be a little bit crooked. So now that the uh, haircut is generally roughed out, what I'm gonna do here is comb everything straight down, which is going to put every little flaw on blast. And that's kind of what I want to see as I go into refine. So when I go in and start cleaning up the edges and softening things up and texturizing things, I, I need to comb it straight down into a bowl so I can see where every little gap and every little heavy spot is. And that's just gonna show me where I missed a hair here or missed a hair there or I can touch things up. What I want to do along some of these edges here is grab my texturizing scissor and um, I'm just gonna soften up some of these edges and, and the weight line like is, is really, really heavy. Um, but because he has somewhat thinner, kind of finer hair, uh, it's not thin, it's just fine. It's very, very fine. I don't need to texturize this a lot for it to look very texturized. And so I'm just gonna dust these ends here to more or less kind of remove tool marks to make the haircut look uncut. It's gonna, it's gonna remove some of that like fresh haircut lines and um, make everything look a little bit kind of grown in and soft. So I'm just taking, I don't know, two or three snips near the ends of any, any part of this haircut that look heavy, including through the back here with a little scissor over comb using the texturizer. And so that's it. That's about the haircut. Now I can kind of comb it around and make sure everything's going to sit right. And look at that. He almost looks like Leo already. Now we can move on to the style. So, oh man, here's the thing about these kinds of haircuts is like the styling process it doesn't have to be in, super involved. If he just slapped a little tiny bit of pomade in here and let it air dry, it would look good. But because I wanna do a photo shoot here, I wanna get his hair moving nicely. And the key is to get the hair to move nicely, you have to style it. And don't think of styling as putting every hair exactly where you want it and having it stay perfectly put. That's how shorter haircuts work. And that's how like heavily pomaded haircuts work. But a hairstyle like this is meant to move. You wanna think of styling it as changing the way that it moves so that it looks better as it moves. And the way that I'm gonna do that, what I'm doing here is high heat and high power to remove all the moisture. I'm just wiggling it around by hand and you don't have to blow dry it exactly where you want it. You kinda of wanna blow dry it left and right and left and right and wiggle it around a whole bunch. And like the more you move it, the better. 
so once all the moisture is removed and the hair is just kind of frizzy and puffy, I can go back with a brush and I'm going to use high power and, or excuse me, high heat and low power. And I'm going to start smoothing things out. And what you'll see within a few seconds here is by pulling the hair flat against the head, I'm going to severely reduce the amount of wave and I'm going to make it wave more uniformly. So on the temple there, I'm kind of blow drying it up. That's not because I want it to style up. That's because if I pull it up, that's a flat surface of the head that I can straighten out that wave against. And so I'm just pulling everything flat or flat wrapping it to get everything a little bit smoother, a little bit more uniform. Now, if I want like James Bond sleek here, if I want to remove all of the wave, I would do this and then follow it with a brush that had even more tension. But because I want to leave some natural wave in there, I'm just going to use this kind of, you know, standard paddle brush here, um, which is just going to remove some wave, but not all the wave. Now doing this is going to make the hair really shiny and it's going to make it move nicely. Like that is the key. When you see messy hair moving around that looks nice, it's because it's been polished like this. So now in the front, I'm going to add a little bit of volume at the root. And because his hair is very fine, it's not going to want to stand up on its own. You know, I always say, oh, good hair doesn't come from a jar. The product alone won't stand the hair. The blow dryer alone won't stand the hair. But when you combine the two together, you can get the hair to stand. So that was high heat and high or high heat and low power at the root um, to pull it up and then cold air to set the hair up. And you can see that little lift at the root that it left. So now what I'm doing with this product, which is ADH Dry, available at ADHbrand.com, is I'm just going to rake it very um, sparingly throughout the hair. And what this will do is make the hair stick to itself. It's going to prevent little individual flyaways. It's going to prevent the hair from just looking all poofy and wispy and fluffy. It kind of just makes the hair act a little bit dirty. Ignore that clump that I got on the right temple there. That is such a rookie move, but I seem to do it all the time because apparently I'm a perpetual rookie in certain senses. What I want to do with this product is just make the hair feel a little bit sticky. And the reason I want to do that is if one individual hair is lifted, it's going to fall under its own weight. But if I can stick all the hairs together, they'll hold each other up and it gives the hair a little bit of a memory. Now, before I show you the actual end result here, let's talk about this photo shoot. I'm cleaning up here. Casey's outside talking on the phone or something, touching his hair. I'm just letting him live in it for now because I want the first couple shots to be very natural. I don't want it to be like put together. So what I'm using here is a 16 inch beauty dish with a diffuser on it. This is just a Godox SL60 video light, very cheap on eBay um, or Amazon or whatever, very cheap light. And then for my fill light beneath, I'm using a Yongnuo YN 360 with some diffusion paper. Now in the back here, I have one uh, Godox SL60 pointed at the wall to light those bricks. Otherwise they will fall dark. And I have another one pointed at the back of the model to kind of cut him out from the background. For my camera, I chose a Canon 5D Classic today because I really like the colors out of this thing. And I used a Tamron 70-210 F4, which is kind of my workhorse, like daily carry lens for the salon. And you know, an F4 lens is not the most exciting to use at times, but if you're shooting against a wall, you don't need a fast lens. As soon as I get Casey in here, I wanna get my settings right and dial in my lighting. And one trick that I kind of like to do is as I'm deciding how much fill to put in there, how much rim light to put in there, I like to severely underexpose a couple photos because I find when it's very, very underexposed, it's a lot easier to see the nuances in the highlights on the skin to see if I need more fill or less fill. And it makes it a little bit easier for me to dial in um, exactly where I want my lights. It almost works kind of like false colors. Like it, you, instead of being overwhelmed with the information of the entire image, you're, you just see the highlights. And now I'm going to, you know, kind of dial in my exposure. And what I want to look for is I want to see more nuance in the highlights on the skin, even if it means losing some detail in the hair, because believe it or not, facial expressions will sell the haircut more than the hair will sell the haircut. And so I want to save those facial expressions by exposing for the skin and not letting the highlights be crazy. So his hair here is... Um, He's just been touching it and not thinking about it. And that's kind of what it fell and did on its own. So if you look here, I touched the hair for literally six seconds. And in six seconds, we have a world of difference in the way that the hair looks here. And so I want you to pay attention to that. Six seconds of touching the hair drastically changed the look. Um, this is so key because people will, you know, I don't want you to blow dry your hair and say, oh, it didn't work because it didn't look like the picture on the right. It looked like the picture on the left. If your hair looked like the picture on the left, all you need to do is touch it for six seconds. Like this is hair that's meant to move and it's meant to change throughout the, um, 
throughout the day here. So here I'm, I'm trying to have Casey put his cheekbone up in the air because I wanted to see it, the silhouette of it against the backdrop. And when I did that, I realized that my fill light was a little strong and we were losing some contours on his face. So I, I lowered the fill light and I was able to get the shot again with more contours on the face. So now I'm adjusting the hair and just trying different angles. And here I like this shot a lot. This is probably my favorite one. Um, but I, you know, I got to make sure to have him look at the camera because you know what sells a haircut as well um, is eyes. Eyes sell the haircut. So here I'm, I'm moving him around and just looking at different angles on his face and kind of playing with his hair and seeing if I can get the hair to just fall into an interesting shape. Like you can see that I'm not putting a ton of effort into it. And then in fact, I have him shake his hair and touch his hair himself because I'm just looking for what it kind of naturally wants to do. And then I want to emphasize that. And um, again, this is a hairstyle that moves. It's going to look different. Like when you see Leo sometimes with clean, tidy hair and you see him sometimes with messy hair, those could have been seconds apart. And that's what a haircut like this is meant to do. It'll go from neat to messy every time the wind blows. Um, you know, and people go, oh, the wind's going to ruin my hair. Well, you know, if it's blow dried correctly and cut correctly, the wind will make it actually look better. Like it'll, it'll mess up and look good. So I noticed as I was looking at the back of him here that he has like kind of muscular shoulders. And I was like, maybe I want to get some shoulders in the shot there. But as I got the shot, I saw that my, my highlights were kind of dull. So I pulled off all my diffusion here. And then ultimately I decided I didn't like the shoulders after all. So I had him turn his head a little bit here to get a little bit of cheek and maybe a little bit of the corner of his eye in here and add some person back to the photo. And that I kind of like right there. We can see, you know, to, to me now it's a portrait. It's not just a picture of the back of the head, maybe not a traditional portrait, but you can see the silhouette of his face. He's got a nice face there. Anyways, this is my first time trying to do this format of a video cramming in this much content at once. Um, I, I hope it went over smoothly enough and I hope that it gets better in the future. I wanted to keep it brief. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're into this sort of thing.